Hey YouTube, I'm working on my electric bike battery today, as you can see here, and so I've got all the cells put in the cell holders, but I'm going to start a uh, spot welding today. And since I'm doing that, I wanted to show you a little bit about my process of how I make battery packs now. So um, you want to start by buying these plastic holders. They come from China, you can buy them uh, from eBay, Aliexpress, I think you can get them on Banggood as well. And they're 4x5, so I have three of them here. And then I also got some single ones too. And the single ones fit into the 4x5 ones, which is great because uh, you can make pretty much any size battery pack you want. But the 4x5 ones are a heck of a lot cheaper um, than these single ones. So once you have your cell holders, you can uh, start putting your cells into them. The cells are 18650 batteries. These come from um, laptop batteries. You can also buy them uh, on, you can buy them new, but they're, they're fairly expensive. So here would be an example of a, a laptop battery that I would find. And at first I would get, take a, a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and open them up, but it, it, you know, it ended up being too much work. So now I just smash them on the ground, and I try to throw them straight down like that, and then the packs crack open. And inside you'll see that there's cells. I mean, if the, the casing on the cell gets ripped when you're opening them, you should buy um, a roll of uh, heat shrink tubing that you can put on your cells. They make it out of PVC. You can find that on eBay as well. 18650 PVC heat shrink. Um, so yeah, so once you start putting your cells in, uh, you'll fill it up. I mean, whatever size pack you want to make. And I'm sure there's, there's a bunch of videos that will describe online about series and parallel and how you want to connect your batteries. But then you're going to put the top on. Then it'll look something kind of like this. And now, we have all these cells, and what I'm doing here is I have uh, all these, I have 13 rows, 13 columns, and they're all going to be in series, and there's going to be 10 cells all in parallel in one row. And what we want to do is connect the whole row and then connect it to the, the, po the um, positive of the next row. But um, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use uh, a spot welder with nickel strip here. So this was some nickel strip I pulled off a battery pack that I was rebuilding. You can buy this cheap online too. I've got some fresh stuff in the house, but I just wanted to show using this because it's just an example. So um, what I found with uh, these packs is at first I would just go like that and I would put all the cells in parallel with this nickel strip and then I would spot weld it down um, but what happens is if one cell goes bad, it takes out the entire row because all the it becomes a dead short and all the cells pump their current into that cell. And um, what happens is they all get drained, it becomes zero. And then if you're not using a battery management system and you put the full pack voltage in not knowing that the row's taken out, you overcharge all these rows too. So you damage all the batteries of the entire pack if one row goes bad. That's why you definitely should use a BMS, um, but there are instances where you can get little readout meters that allow you to check each cell and it'll cycle through them. So you might not, you can get away without using a BMS, but if just for charging, I recommend using one. And I also recommend using one that has uh, a high um, balance current, because a lot of them don't have very high balance current. You're gonna want at least 50 uh, milliamps balance current. And, um, so yeah, so uh, I'll show you a little bit about the welder here. Generally when I'm welding, this is a homemade spot welder from uh, a microwave oven. And there's videos on YouTube that show you how to make this. But um, I usually like to weld with a fan too. So I have a fan going here that I have going on the battery. Because the welder will apply a little bit of heat to these batteries. And they're very heat sensitive. So you don't want them to get hot. So you have this to keep them bit cooler and so uh, this welder has two um, ends to it there's one I put a little uh, copper wire that I well little uh, a copper wire that I twisted around and that's one electrode here's the other ele electrode and it's about as simple as this so say I would put the nickel strip down here like that and I want to fuse that to the battery and um, this is a uh, nickel 
plated strip. So I think the center of it's steel and the outside is nickel. Um, so it works well with the way I have the welder set up right now. But what I do is uh, I take my power cord here for the welder. Be very careful too because on this other side of this welder is 110 volts and if you touch it you're going to kill yourself or, uh, or harm yourself quite a bit. So be careful. Um, don't do this at home. Unless you followed a video online that shows you how to make this and you know what you're doing. Uh, I also recommend wearing gloves, which I don't have right now, so, ouch. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you how I, I zap the strip with the spot welder onto the battery. And uh, you want to be, the positive side of these batteries is always more um, sensitive. So you want to be more careful not to hold these, um, these electrodes down too long. I mean, this they make welders where you have a very, like, um, they use pulse width modification and, uh, the, the, you know, the, the amount of power that goes in the battery is for a very short period of time. Mine is very, um, caveman-like, and you just hit the two down quickly onto the cell, and, uh, and that seems to work quite well for me, and I haven't noticed any degradation from the cells from doing that, as some people would say you would have online. Um, I think it all depends on how your welder's set up. But, um, so I'm just going to plug it in. I'm going to... Hey, so it turns out I can't use three hands at the same time. I only have two. So I'm going to try to put the phone down and show you how to do, use the welder. Um, and this is the first way I started doing the strips. Um, this is just to show you how to do it. And I find that this, this way actually just ends up killing your pads. So. Hey, so now I'm going to show you how to weld the strip onto the battery. Remember, this is the first way I made the battery packs, but this is just to show you how it's done. So I'm going to plug the welder in. You're going to hear a loud buzzing noise. And what we're going to do is take the two electrodes. So there's one. Here's the other, and we're going to put them down on the battery and the strip for a very short second. Be careful because it will get hot. So, so there's one, and here's two. So you can see that now there's those indentations there, which is where they've been welded together. And you see when I pull here, it doesn't come undone. If you use a lot of force, you can get it to un come undone. Now, see that's a part. Now I'm going to go on and show you uh, the new way that I make battery packs. So instead of welding straight to the cells like that with the nickel strip, which is a great way to make a really quick pack but not a very reliable one, uh, what I found the best way to do is to put your um, nickel strip in between the two cells that you're trying to put in series. And you're going to want to cut little fuses from the nickel strip. Little fuses like that. And that just comes from the plain old nickel strip that I have down there. And you, these work really well. I find that using resistor legs, like Jehu Garcia recommended, they don't uh, actually blow at the right amperage to protect your batteries. And also, you have to solder them. And these are nice because you can just spot weld them. So I put them across in between the two cells like that. And then I'll spot weld it onto there, spot weld it onto there. And then I usually try to spot weld it onto the strip as well, so the strip doesn't move around, and to make sure there's contact. And so, this main strip will handle the power, and these two, these little fuses are only responsible for the power going into each battery. And so this setup will protect your parallel row if any of the cells go bad in it, and I've, I've had that happen quite often. So, um, this is a good... Uh, design that I've found that works for me uh, for building battery packs. And if you have any comments or questions, please uh, put them in the comments section. I, I'm, I'll be glad to help you out. So, thank you very much for watching this video.